Bora TV. The world is thinking. I wouldn't name anything that I believe a computer will never be able to do. This becomes a sort of philosophical question. Um, right now, we're at a point in history where there are some things that computers don't do very well. I'll tell you, here's something that's right in the middle, translation of human language, one to another. Five years ago, it was complete rubbish. I mean, it was, uh, it, was it seemed like a hopeless problem for computers. Suddenly, we're in a world where Google, in particular, has a pretty remarkable translation service, not just between popular languages like English and French, but between the most obscure languages of hundreds of languages. Um, if you've used it, you know that on the one hand, it's surprisingly good, and on the other hand, it's surprisingly bad. I mean, it's comically bad. I could, I, I, do any of you use this to translate web pages yeah. and so forth? It's, what's remarkable about it is it's, not just a computer that's doing the translating, it's also kind of collective human knowledge that's being assembled by the computer. Google is very cleverly keeping track of everything people type and everything they read and using that to feed the ability of their translation service. This is becoming a long-winded answer. <laughs> right now, computers can't write poetry that's worth anything, can't compose music. Um, did people here follow this wacky thing on TV earlier in the year where the IBM computer called Watson was playing the TV quiz game Jeopardy? Yeah, we broadcast that. Yeah. Well, that was a sort of, at least it was billed as an artificial mm -hmm. intelligence touchstone, partly because the syntax of the Jeopardy questions is so complicated. And on the one hand, the computer had access to all of the facts, and on the other hand, it still couldn't always quite work out what the question was. Yeah. It beat the human beings because it could press the buzzer so fast. <laughs> <clears throat> I once asked Marvin Minsky, who I think you know, uh, about whether you can get human culture programmed in by very fast computers, and he said, yes, you just write in the code, and you crunch the works of Beethoven before lunch, you could do it with a very, very fast computer. And then I said, but why would the computer have any inkling of these sorts of human emotions without hormones? In other words, without needing to, <laughs> without the kind of responses we have to our environment, whether we like it or not. They are simply being programmed for straight information rather than passion. Do you agree? I don't think personally that the hormones matter so much. I think the hormones might be an accident of chemistry, but I understand what you're getting at. I think what, what really makes these interesting so-called artificial intelligence problems hard is that they turn out to require vast knowledge of everything. You can't do translation and you can't write poetry in a way without knowing everything that we know about the real world you know, that toast goes into toasters and turns brown. I mean, just facts of everyday life all connect with one another. This is why if the translation problem is going to be solved, it, it's going to be by something like Google, which has access to all of this inter interconnected human knowledge. Where the passion comes from and the emotion, well, that's a harder question, but I'm not personally persuaded that it's something that won't exist in machine form someday.